Hey everyone, welcome to uh, another Adobe Premiere tutorial, and this is on handling HDR video. And HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. This basically you can think of as video files that have a wider range of colors available, and more importantly, a broader range of difference between bright and darks than you would have in traditional SDR or standard dynamic range video like most of what we're used to with uh, traditional high definition video. If you have a relatively new TV and you've ever turned something on in streaming and seen a little indicator come up either on the descriptor or when you start playing on the TV it says HDR, this is what they're talking about. It's something that's been encoded with this greater range of bright to dark and a greater color palette. And I'm all for HDR. It's great. You can make things look more realistic. You have some wider ranges of options in your color grade, but it can create some challenges. And so this is just a quick tutorial on how to work with that stuff in Premiere. And two quick notes. First off, this is specifically just about like workflow and settings and making sure you're handling this stuff correctly. I'm not going to get into how to color grade well for HDR or how to light for it or shoot it or any of those things. This is just technical. Here's how the workflow is going to go because all the creative aspects is a much larger conversation. And second, I'm recording this in October 2023, and as of right now, it's accurate, but we all know that every time they release a new point release of Premiere, uh, Adobe likes to change everything and have everything work differently and introduce a whole bunch of new bugs and sometimes some new features. So your mileage may vary. Hopefully this workflow will stay relatively accurate for a little while, but you might see things change. And also we're in a transitional period as people are getting more accustomed to working with HDR. So Adobe may decide to you know, foreground some of these things differently or have some things work in an auto way to kind of protect you from some of this stuff. We just don't know. But anyway, at the moment I'm recording this, everything in this workflow will work with the current version of Adobe Premiere. I'm currently working in Premiere version 23.6.0. So first thing is, I have a couple clips here, and thanks to some of my students who have some cell phone cameras that shot in HDR. And this is one of the reasons I thought this might be useful, is I've had students in the past couple weeks running into all sorts of different issues if they're shooting on their cell phones and it's recording in HDR, but then their workflow isn't handling it correctly. Or in some cases, they are handling it correctly, outputting HDR files that then, when they go to show it on the projector in class, the projectors are not HDR capable, and so their footage looks all distorted. So let me give you just a quick example of what I'm talking about. And no matter where you're watching this, you should be able to see the really blatant differences here. So this is an original clip that one of my students shot in HDR. So here's the original clip, what it's supposed to look like. And just to sort of verify that, here's a photo I took of my laptop screen. Again, not 100% perfect because you're getting it through my camera on my phone, but you can kind of see it looks about the same like that. That's what it was supposed to look like. So then in contrast, when we put it up on the projector in class, this is what it looked like. This is not an artifact of the photo I was taking with my cell phone. This is how it actually looked to your eye. Almost the entire right half of the image is completely blown out. There's no detail. And a lot of the other parts are as well. Some of the colors are shifted weirdly. So things were just not looking correct. And it's because that projector could not handle an HDR image. Now I was able to convert the file to an SDR standard dynamic range video and put it up on the projector and this is a photo of what it then looked like up on the screen at that point. I will tell you to the naked eye and I think also to the cameras while here, it was not quite as vibrant as the full HDR version was supposed to look like but it also was displaying correctly and there's a huge value in that. So I'm going to show you how to do this as one of the things we go through is take your HDR images and export a SDR version of them for handing into your professors in my case. If you're not sure where this is gonna be shown and it might be being shown on equipment that is not capable of displaying that. In fact, you can even run into problems with HDR equipment because there are different versions or flavors of HDR. So this clip was actually shot by the student and encoded in Dolby Vision, which is a particular encoding form of HDR. We played it back on a television that was HDR capable and could handle the broader dynamic range and color palette but it did not have Dolby Vision, so it didn't know what to do with that. And on the TV, we got something that looked like this. So it's not quite as bad as that first one I showed you on the projector, but we're still blowing out almost this entire right side, not getting that full contrast and stuff we had. And again, the issue was the display unit, the monitor we were showing it on, just didn't know what to do with that Dolby Vision encoding. So these are the kind of problems you can run into when you're dealing with HDR stuff. And again, hopefully a few years down the road, these will all be things of the past, fingers crossed, but at the moment, these are real problems that crop up. Okay, so let's get to it and look how to work with this HDR stuff in Premiere and make sure things are being done right. 
So I have a couple of sample clips here, one in HDR and one in SDR. These are both from students who shot them on their phones and were kind enough to let me borrow them. This one I already showed you. And if we wanted to double check if this is HDR or see what's going on there, I'm gonna open it up in QuickTime Player. I hit Command-I there to bring up the inspector. And you can see it's in HEVC, the H.265 codec. And what I'm looking at is down here. This is the important stuff. See what it says? BT.2020, that is a HDR color space. It's that broader color palette I was talking about. And then here it says transfer function, you'll see BT.2100, HLG, which is hybrid log gamma. This has to do with how it's recording this stuff and the brightness availability. But basically, if you see this 2020 or 2100, go ahead and think of that. That's something in HDR. It's going to have that broader color palette and that wider range of brightness available or difference between the brights and the darks. Uh, this one you'll notice also actually is encoded in Dolby Vision, which is kind of just a different flavor of HDR. You're still dealing with the same kind of color palette and brightness range. It's a way of encoding the things theoretically more efficiently. You're getting better results out of the same amount of data. You also see things that are HDR10+, plus, or it'll just say regular HDR10. For our purposes today, we're going to just ignore all of those. And they're all in this same category of HDR, and that's really the main concern here. So to contrast this, if I look at the SDR clip I have, you probably see just on your eye or the recording here that this does look a little dimmer. It doesn't have the same highest level of brightness as that HDR video and also a little less contrasty. Some of the colors are a little less vibrant because we're working in a smaller color space. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Open up the inspector. This is the H.264 video. And here you'll see it says BT.709. Sometimes it'll say BT, sometimes it'll say REC, like REC 709. It might just say 709. For our purposes, all these mean the same thing. It has to do with the particular standards put out by this body, ITU, I forget what it stands for, International Telecommunications Union or something like that. Anyway, it refers to a specification in these engineering rules. What we need to know is just that if we see that 2020 or 2100, we're talking about HDR. If I see something with the 709, I'm talking about standard dynamic range, our traditional, what we're used to from like HD video. If you happen to have some really old footage, something like from pre-HD in the standard def era, that would actually be the 601 spec. So if you ever see 601, that's what that's talking about. And that's an actually smaller color palette than what we have in 709, which already looks pretty good. And then the 2020 or 2100 is an even broader color palette, even more possibilities there and a broader range of colors. Okay, so I can see here that I do in fact have one HDR clip and one SDR clip. And let's go ahead and just bring these into my Premiere project. Now, what I am currently recommending for my students, and this may be something that changes down the road as we have more equipment and workflows that are fully HDR compatible and our projectors can show HDR and everything like that. But for the moment, what I'm encouraging them to do is to actually finish everything in SDR because we know that will play anywhere it might need to be played. And I will show you how to also export HDR versions of things. But what I am recommending them to do is just to have everything working in that SDR color space to avoid any potential problems. So I have this SDR clip. This is fine. This loads up and plays. No issues there. This HDR one is where I might have a little bit of a problem if I'm trying to work in SDR. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell Premiere to map this footage from HDR into an SDR smaller color space, less brightness range but then everything will be in that same color space and match as I work through my project. So the way you do this, and I'll note if I had multiple HDR clips, I could select all of them and do this for multiple clips at a time. In this case, I just have one. So I'm gonna right click on it and find the modify menu and go to interpret footage. I will also note, by the way, if I go into the properties here, I could see the same sort of thing to find out, here's my color space, that this is Rec 2100 HLG. So I can see exactly what color space this was in and confirm again, this was a HDR clip. Okay, but I'll go back here, modify, interpret footage. And I'm in this modify menu. You can see there's several different tabs. And the important one for our purposes here today, there might be other stuff you need to change if you're working in different frame rates and stuff. Like I usually don't work in 60 but we're gonna ignore all that for now, is this thing right down here. So you'll see this says use media color space from file, and this is the default. Anytime you bring in a clip, by default, Premiere is going to want to just interpret it the way the original footage is, probably what you would normally want Premiere to do. So it makes sense that this is the default. Whatever that clip was recorded in, whatever the format of it is, interpret it as that. Don't try to change it to something else. We wanna see the footage the way it was intended. But in this case, since I don't wanna work in that HDR space, I wanna bring this into an SDR look. I'm going to click color space override 
And then this is going to give me an option for, okay, what color space do I want to be in? And I'm going to select Rec. 709, which is high definition, standard dynamic range, color space that we've been working in for the past 20 years or so, and select OK. And you may have noticed when I did that, if you're paying attention to the window up here, it got a little bit dimmer because it's going from that HDR space where I have a wider range of difference between brightness and darks. And particularly one of the things you can do with HDR is make things really bright. I no longer have that ability in SDR space, but you can see it mapped this correctly. This is probably the correct interpretation of what we'd want this footage to look like if we are limited to an SDR capability. Okay, and then I could just build a sequence out of this. I'm just gonna select a very short portion of this clip and put it in here. If you already had a sequence created, you might get something that comes up that says like, hey, should I change my sequence settings, blah, blah, blah. That depends on what you were trying to do and what your sequence settings were, but normally, yes, I want to change my sequence settings to match what my clips are if they're at a different resolution or frame rate or something like that. If I do need to adjust that, I can right click on the sequence, go to sequence settings, and see all the options here. And you'll notice one of the things is the working color space. So this should be whatever that first clip was that I put in, that Rec. 709. If it was not, if it somehow got changed something different, then I would need to go in and change the color space of my sequence as well. And you can see I have these same options here. I could go to that Rec. 2100 HLG or Rec. 2100 PQ. For our purposes today, I'm not even going to get into the difference between those. They're both the same color palette. They're kind of different ways of encoding the specific data around it. In this case, since the clip I had was HLG, I would go with that, but we'll just go with Rec. 709 because we're trying to keep everything in SDR mode here. And just so we can see it, I'm also going to put in just a little bit of this SDR clip after it. So we'll have a little two clip movie here, only a couple seconds long. Okay, so now I've got my sequence. Remember I converted this HDR clip to be treated as SDR and mapped into that space. My sequence is in SDR, so everything should be good. I'm ready to export. I could go here, File, Export, Media, or I could just click on this Export tab. Give my sequence a name. And in this case, I'm fine exporting as H.264. There are some more settings in here I will get into in a minute, but for the moment, I actually know everything's going to be fine with this, so I'm just going to hit Export. Okay, let's go take a look at that clip. Here it is. This looks okay. Right, I'm not getting any of those weird blowouts or anything like that. And the other clip in this case, I forgot about this. This clip was actually a 1080 clip. This was a UHD clip. So when it brought them both in natively, this one is going to look smaller. If we wanted them to match, I could open up this one, go to my effect controls and just scale it up to fill the screen. I could also have scaled this one down to 1080 and worked in a 1080 sequence if I don't need to export in a UHD resolution. So that would have fixed that. But in terms of the color, this looks okay. This looks okay. And again, it does not look as vibrant as the original clip, which I'll pull up again, just to remind you what it looked like in HDR. And this isn't actually even in full HDR because I have my monitor set to kind of compress everything down a little bit because I realized when I was doing a test on this that my screen capture software does not work properly if I have things in full HDR and I'm kind of viewing it on my monitor that way. So I needed to bring this into a little bit smaller color space, but you can still see this has a little more vibrancy to the colors and a little bit more contrast, more difference between the brights and darks than this one does. But still, this looks fine. We're not getting distortion or anything weird. This is what we would expect an SDR image to look like. And it actually doesn't look bad if you're looking at this on a monitor or pulling it up on a projector. It's really only when you're kind of going back and forth and comparing it to something in HDR and kind of seeing like, oh, wow, this actually looks a little muted relative to the thing I just saw. But that worked great. That's how we would get our sequence out of here in SDR and we'd be good. Now, even though this is not what I'm recommending for my students, let's say that you wanted to actually work with this in HDR and keep it in sort of all its HDR glory. Maybe you're going to be exporting this and you know the place that you're going to be showing it or uploading it can handle HDR media and you want to maintain that since your footage had that broader colored palette and broader brightness range, you want to maintain that. So we can do that. In this case, I would need to do two things. First, I'm going to go back into my clip modify interpret footage. We remember we went in here before and I'm going to change this back to use the color space from the file. So if I came into this project knowing from the beginning I just wanted to stay in HDR, I wouldn't even have had to go in here in the first place. Really what I'm doing is just going in and undoing that thing we did to change it into Rec. 709. So I would just leave the clip as it was when we brought it in. And then I'm going to have to go into my sequence and do the same thing. I do need to change my sequence settings. So right click sequence settings and I want to tell the sequence now, hey, we actually are working in HDR. 
I want to switch this to 2100 HLG. So I'll do that, and now this is maintaining that higher dynamic range through the whole thing. Now you'll notice there's kind of a mismatch between these two clips because this one was created in SDR. It does not have that full dynamic range and that broader color palette of the HDR clip. So I'd probably need to actually color grade this SDR clip and do something to get them matching so it's not so obvious when I'm cutting back and forth between them that the color space is changing if I'm mixing HDR and SDR footage. If all my footage is HDR, then this isn't an issue. And obviously if it's all SDR, that's not an issue either. That's what we've been working with for the past 20 years. We're used to that. Okay, so now I've got my sequence changed. I've got this clip back reading in HDR. So that's all good. I'm gonna go back to my export tab and I'll give this a name, export HDR from Premiere. Now we're just gonna have to do a little bit more work. So I'm gonna go into my video section here and then I'm gonna need to click on this more button to reveal these later settings. And here's the problem. You'll notice my exports color space is set as Rec. 709, and this is grayed out. I can't change it. And you might think like, well, what if I unclick some of these things and try different options? So if I go into this high 10 option, that will unlock this, and then I have the choice to export it in an HDR option. So we'll do that in a second. But I did want to note, by default, if you're exporting as an H.264, this is going to be grayed out and you won't have the option to export in HDR. It's only going to put things into this Rec. 709 color space and things are going to come out looking wrong. So I'm going to leave it like this for a second just to show you what happens. Okay, so that exported. Let's look at this clip. And you see what happened to that HDR clip is it's completely blowing things out because I'm taking an HDR clip in an HDR sequence and then saying like, hey, on the output file, put it into this smaller color space and I'm not really doing an appropriate conversion or anything to it. It's just kind of like throwing it in there and then telling it to read in a different way and I get something that really looks wrong. I can open this up and you can see this is still in that Rec. 709 color space. My second clip, the one that started in SDR, actually doesn't look so bad. This looks about normal because this was a clip that was SDR already. So it's not really having to remap it uh, in any way, but this looks obviously wrong. So let's go back in here and try this again. And I'm still in this H.264 format. And I'll show you some other options in a second, but I'm going to unclick this and go to this high 10 profile within the H.264 space. And now I can change this and I'm going to go to Rec. 2100 HLG, which is what my sequence was as well. Let's rename this Export HDR from Premiere Good. Okay, so here's my clip. You can see this is no longer blown out. This looks correct now. I scroll through it. You can definitely see the difference now between the two. When I go from the HDR to this SDR that is now looking dim and sort of muted. So again, if you're mixing HDR and SDR footage, you're gonna have to do some kind of color grade to match them together. But it did export correctly. I'll go to my inspector, command I, and look in here and you can see this is in that 2020 color space. It's using the 2100 HLG transfer function, which is what we wanted. So this did work. So again, if I want to output as an H.264 out of Premiere and I'm trying to actually export an HDR sequence, I need to make sure that I'm in this high 10 profile. You notice even if I just go to high, Rec. 709 is still locked in. I can't change that. You do also have the option to output in some other formats that also support HDR. So instead of H.264, if I want to go down to QuickTime here, and I get some other codecs available. And some of these will support it, some won't. But my recommendation if I was outputting this and I want an HDR sequence would be I do Apple ProRes 422HQ, which is going to be a much larger file. And we'll see that relative to an H.264, but it is going to be a little higher quality, maintains some more data, particularly if I'm going to be doing anything to it beyond this, like if I was taking this into some other software to do some visual effects or additional color grading or something, I don't really want to do it with an H.264. That's kind of a side conversation to this, but that's not really what that format's designed for. So I, I could use this. This also, by the way, will upload to YouTube. So if you are planning on putting a video up on YouTube, you can use this format as your export. You notice when I go down here, I do have the option to change my color space. So I'll switch this to the 2100 HLG. My recommendation based on my testing at this moment, and we all know every time Premiere releases a new version, things may change, is to leave this as 8 bits per channel and turn off use maximum render quality in the little checkbox here. 
I'll hit export. And I forgot to rename that file, but it was called this. And we'll open that up. And you can see, again, this looks fine. Looks pretty much exactly like that last one we export. In fact, let's compare them side to side. So I'm tabbing between the two, and you can see they look identical on both clips. Because they're in the same color space, they're doing the same thing. It's just a different encoding, different codec. But if I look at this one I just exported, you can see it's in ProRes 422HQ, and I go down here, it is in that 2020-2100, which is what I was looking for. I mentioned it's going to be larger. If we look over here, you'll see the one I exported in the H.264 format is 40 megs. The one I exported in ProRes is 360 megs, so about nine times as big. And let's remember this is for a two second sequence, so you can get big files pretty quickly if you're doing anything of any length. But it works, and that's our way we can get that out of there. So that's how to work with HDR stuff in Premiere. I do want to show you one other thing, which is how to work with these color spaces in DaVinci Resolve. I personally don't do editing in that software. I just don't think it is up to par with Premiere or Avid if I'm going to be doing a creative edit. But it's really good at file conversions. It's very fast, very efficient. When I'm doing like transcodes for Avid, I generally do those in Resolve because it's a lot faster. And so same thing here. So let's say I'd edited a whole movie in Premiere and I output my HDR sort of master copy to archive with the maximum quality. But let's say I'm a student. My professor asked me to hand this in in SDR so that it will screen properly in our classroom on our projector that's not HDR equipped, hypothetically to steal something from my own personal life here. And so I want to also have an SDR version of this. Now, I could do this in Premiere. I could go through and change the clips and change the sequence and change my export settings like we just did. That's kind of a lot of work to go through. What I really want to do is just take that file I have and do a single conversion to it. So I could bring that back into Premiere, do a conversion here and stuff like that. But this is the kind of thing that I actually would just go to Resolve for. It's faster, and particularly if I'm working with longer clips or multiple clips, it's a lot faster at that. So I'm going to open up Resolve and just create a new project. And in this case, I'll let me take my ProRes version, since that is my sort of master quality version, bring that into Resolve. And it's going to say, do I want to change the frame rate? In this case, I do. Your mileage may vary depending on what your project is and what it was supposed to be. Again, I normally wouldn't be working in 60 in the first place. And so if I had multiple clips, this same thing I'm going to show you would still work. But in this case, I'll just do it with one clip. So I'm going to right click on it and select this very top option, create new timeline using selected clips. And you can give this a name if you want, HDR from Premiere. You could change some of these settings if you want. I'm just going to leave it all the same. Hit create. And so now it has a sequence that has that clip in it. If I had multiple clips, it'll just kind of string them all out. But the main reason I wanted to do that was just take this and then I can pop over to the deliver tab here and set all my output settings to output another copy of this. Convert to SDR in Resolve and set a location for this. And I'm not going to go through all these other settings. I have other tutorials that do that, but set your audio and your file and all the other things appropriately as you want and set your codec the way you want. Uh, this will let me output, just so you know, as HDR or SDR in H.264 or H.265 or ProRes or DNX HD or DNX HR, which are pretty much all the codecs I would use at this point. I'll just leave it in H.264. We're trying to make a small file to hand in. If I wanted to export a full UHD version, I could set that here too. See, there's my UHD. I just note that I'd want to actually go in and change the project settings because my project settings here are set to HD. So what it's actually doing is like scaling it down to HD in the timeline. And then if I did this export as a UHD, it's going to scale that back up. And what I'd really want to do is just say like, no, let's work in UHD. So we're not downscaling and then back upscaling over here when I export it. But I'll just export an HD version. That's fine. So all the other settings, just do what you normally would do. Here's the important thing for us in my advanced settings here. I want to look in this section right here. You'll see color space and gamma. And the default is to do these the same as the project, but I can change them to something else. And here is the nice thing about doing this in Resolve as opposed to Premiere or Avid. In either of those, I have to be a little careful about matching my clip and my sequence or project and my export settings. And here, whatever I change this to, it will work perfectly fine. It'll just do the conversion here, regardless of whether the project was set to something else. Again, that's one of the things I really like about this for export. So I'm just going to set this to Rec 709 and also set this to Rec 709. And so regardless of what this original clip was, it's going to do the proper conversion to output things correctly in this. And in this case, we know the original clip was in HDR. So I'll add that to my render queue. I'll hit render. 
and it's done. I'll point out, I did not skip over any time or fast forward this or anything. It's really just that quick. The resolve encoding and transcoding is really fast. Here's my clip. I'll open it up and everything looks correct as we would expect it to. Again, doesn't look as vibrant as the HDR version, but that's not the fault of resolve. That's because we're putting it into a smaller color space in our standard dynamic range. Go into my video details. You can see it's correctly converted everything to 709 here. And I'll just go back and look at that one we exported out of Premiere. And again, I can tab back and forth between those. Put them on the same frame just for, and you can see they look identical. They're doing the same thing. This was just a little easier because I just had to change that setting in one place on my finished sequence and I was good to go. And again, it exported really fast. So if I had a longer project I was trying to convert, I could actually be saving some time by going into Resolve. I'm not saying you will get a better result from Resolve. Like I just noted, these look identical. I just think it's a little more efficient. If I did want to export another HDR version, I could just go in here and set this to Rec 2020 and then pick my gamma tag so that these match what my original clip was and that would work fine as well. Let's go ahead and do that quick just so you can see. So I'll say, this isn't really a conversion, it's sort of a copy, although I am transcoding it from the ProRes to H.264. Let's add that, I'll render that, done. And you can see now I'm back to that broader color gamut and this one Second clip is again looking pretty dim. So very easy to do that stuff in Resolve. So that's your tips on working with HDR stuff in Premiere and a little bit on Resolve. Hope that was helpful for you and gives you a guide to working with this stuff. As you can see, it's not rocket science. It's not super hard, but this is one of these things that can trip you up if you're not paying attention to it. So I would just say if you have some HDR footage and particularly if you're mixing some HDR and SDR footage, Take that five seconds at the beginning of your project and think about what you're doing and make sure you're setting all your settings correct as you're bringing things in and that then you're checking things as you export and making sure to control those settings instead of just kind of leaving everything on the default and hoping it works and then sometimes maybe it will work sometimes you'll get some weird stuff coming out main takeaway lesson be conscious of this if you are working with hdr stuff and make sure that you're doing it correctly so that you get the output you want hope that was helpful i'll see you next time